Borg Warner turbochargers. From small to big and everything in between. From journal bearing to ball bearing, let's delve into what they have to offer. <laughs> Welcome back. We have another video for you. Today we're talking about the Borg Warner range of turbos from small to big and everything in between. We've got journal bearing S200 SXE, S300 SXE and we've got our ball bearing counterparts which are the 7163, two different 7670s and an 8474 black series which I'd like to just go over really really quickly. Uh, the different sizes, the different dimensions, and then what I'd like to do is actually delve into the two 7670s and uh, show you the differences with the two part numbers and the two AR and design turbine housings that are on them. And then I'd like to compare the compressor maps in a slightly different way between the 7163, 7670, 8474. And then I'll go into a little bit more about the compressor maps between the S200 and S300 SXEs. I know they're all different size turbos. I know they all have different horsepower ratings and obviously different compressor maps, but I'd like to just go over some of them and you'll see a little bit more about the thought process that we use at Turbo Direct when it comes to choosing a turbo for a specific application. This is not really a video where we're going to be comparing uh, um, lots of different turbos and going into in-depth differences between specific two models or three models. We just want to give a broad range or a broad perspective about the range of the ball bearing Borg Warner EFR uh, units on the table today and two of the journal bearing options. All right guys, so we've got about 4,000 horsepower on the table here <laughs> and uh, we basically just want to get uh, through some of these different turbochargers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the 8474 black, the 7163 and the two 7670s out of the way and I want to concentrate on these two that look like they're kissing one another. So on the right hand side, my right, we've got the S200 SXE, lots of information about this turbo on our YouTube channel. Uh, we've done comparisons, you've gone over compressor maps, etc. What we haven't done is gone over the S300 SXE. Now there's obviously four or five different options in terms of trim sizes, both turbine and, comp turbine and compressor, ranging from 700 to 1100 horsepower capable setups. This specific one is the turbocharger, which is 825 horsepower capable, ending with a part number 7008. So what we're basically dealing with on the S300 SXE over here is a compressor size of 64 millimeters, 64.4, and 87 X juicer. It's capable of making 825 horsepower and we have a compressor map for that. And it has a nice couple of options in terms of its turbine housing ARs. The turbine wheel on the S300 SXE, this specific unit uses the smaller size or the smaller trim turbine wheel, which is the 76 mil, it measures 76.2 on the in juicer and 67.56 on the X juicer. Uh, you also get a 79 millimeter or 80 millimeter. Some people call it the 80 if they just round up the, uh, the size. Uh, the turbochargers are really, really great. It's a journal bearing turbo, it's not ball bearing. So it's a little bit more laggy than what your ball bearing counterparts would be, but it still has all the features that you'd find on your ball bearing turbos, except for your diverter valve and boost control solenoid. Seven, seven blade splitter uh, CNC machine forged milled wheel. So they forge the material and then machine that forged piece of billet into what you find as, as your compressor wheel. You've got a speed sensor support. Once again, speed sensor support is not drilled all the way through. And you have a boost only source. Once again, also not drilled all the way through. They are threaded, they are there for you depending on if you wanna use them or not. A lot of people don't like to use the boost only source on the compressor housing itself. They prefer to go and get a vacuum block which is installed and mounted to the intake manifold. However, it is there for you to use if you choose to. Uh, all you have to do is just drill through the uh, last little section into the compressor housing. Fully mach machined intake tract. And this specific unit has obviously not been bolted onto the onto the turbine housing. Two, four, six, eight, ten blade uh, turbine wheel. It is a full radial design 
and it is a oil cooled bearing housing. The bearing housing is one piece with a back plate and obviously goes in with four flanges onto the uh, comp housing. There's a little O-ring which seals the back plate into the comp housing and you have your standard oil inlet and oil outlet um, fittings and uh, shape. Very, very similar to your T4s or T3s if you're looking and comparing them to the Garrett unit, except for the fact that this has got a threaded center fitting as opposed to the flange with two bolts on the outsides. And uh, on the outlet, you've got two M8 bolts over here with your outlet. The turbocharger is really good for engine sizes. If you're building a drag car, high horsepower, high revving engine that you've, you've done extensive head work to in the two liter size engine range, this would be a great contender. It would spool up relatively quickly. It comes with an open scroll T4 inlet and obviously a 90 or slightly bigger than a 90 millimeter outlet, but it is a V-band outlet. What we normally do with these V-bands, if you have a look at this, it's sitting at a bit of an angle. What we normally do with these V-band flanges is we just put this into a CNC machine, either a mill or a lathe, and we just face this angle, we basically just face this off so that it is, it is a flat surface over here and your V-band flange would obviously with this angle at the back would basically work with uh, a normal flange instead of having to go and get the mating flange with the same uh, uh, mating angle on uh, the inside in order to be able to use this. So we just face this off, we just machine this flat and then you just use a normal obviously of the same diameter V-band flange and off you go. The specific uh, housing is an AR88 it is a single scroll T4 family, uh, even though if you look at this housing it seems really really large but if you look at the, the width of the scroll it's not as large as it appears to be. Um, so with this specific turbocharger, even if you're using a separated manifold, even though it's not a twin scroll housing with a divider, you will still see a benefit in uh, using that type manifold so you don't have to go and remake a manifold if you already have a twin scroll manifold all that will happen is those pulses that are separated inside of the outlet of the collector on your manifold will just enter into an open scroll You'll, you will still see some benefit obviously not as much as using a divided t4 design like the s200 sxe so that's the s300 sxe the 7008 which is your 825 horsepower capable turbo uh, you'll normally find these running on 1Js, 2Js, RB26s, streetcars um, that are still stock motors, um, stock size motors, haven't been, haven't been stroked, but are built with forged pistons, rods, etc., etc. For a streetable application, a lot of guys take those engines, put them into BMs, E36s, whatever the case might be. Great contender, streetable, makes good horsepower, nice and reliable. You can boost the living daylights out of this little thing and uh, you won't see any failures. Um, the bearing system and the thrust assembly comes out of this specific family that is utilized in industrial applications which run either in stationary engines or engines installed into machinery, earth moving, agriculture, etc. where you find very high boost pressures running all day long. So they are proven, they are reliable, probably the most reliable journal bearing range of turbochargers on the market bar none. Let's move over to the S200 SXE. I know we've done a lot of reviews on this. We're just gonna recap really, really quickly. 57 mil inducer on the compressor, 76.2 at the back, fully machined intake tract, speed sensor port, boost only source, obviously not drilled all the way through as I've mentioned. Nice, small, compact, 650 horsepower capable. Journal bearing as well, 10 blade turbine wheel. The turbine wheel measures 61.4 and 69.5. 69.5 over here on the inducer and uh, 61.4 on the exducer. Spools up really, really nicely. It's got a nice sharp angle on the, uh, the exducer blades. If you look at the aspect ratio between the inducer and exducer, it's quite close. Blades are nice and thin. It is lightweight, although not made from gamma tie like your EFR range. Also journal bearing um, also has your the same oil inlet fitting and outlet as your S300 SXE and it comes with a range of different AR turbine housings. The specific one is AR83 T3 family. Look how thin or small these volutes are. They're really, really small, although the housing looks really big. It's got a nice thick wall, so obviously for that burst containment. 
the same time, you've got the same V-band outlet. So what we do, remember that little angle over there? It's angled at the back, which is essentially what you want to actually clamp your V-band clamp. That's where the clamping actually goes. This mating face over here, sometimes you just use a slip ring, which fits inside here and obviously seals on this face. But what we normally do is we just machine this or face this off so it's flat, get the right size V-band flange on the other side, mate them together, put your clamp, clamp on and off you go. So for those guys that are running a separated manifold, this is a separated or twin scroll housing. For those that are not running a separated manifold and you still have a T4 with an open collector, this will still work. Um, you're obviously not going to get the full benefit, so you don't have to redesign the collector and go into an open uh, scroll. You can connect that open scroll to this flange face. Um, and you'll still see the benefit of obviously the flow going from the open scroll into the, uh, the, the two twin, uh, twin separated ports over here. So it's not ideal, but you don't have to redesign or respend money, a couple of hundred dollars or whatever the case might be on a new manifold. So that's the S200SXE. I'm not going to go into too much more detail there. It's also got a for forged machined wheel. I want to just put these two compressor maps next to each other. Yes, they are not from the same family. Yes, they are complete. They are light years apart in terms of the horsepower and the physical size and the flow rates, etc. But let's just take an interesting look at the two compressor maps side by side. All right, guys, so we've got the compressor maps in front of us over here. And on the left-hand side, my left, we've got the S200 SXE. And on the right, we've got the 7008. So it's a 1300 909 7008 part number. 825 horsepower capable, 64.47 inducer on the compressor side, 87.37 exducer on the compressor. That's the specific turbocharger we're referencing here. Let's just start off basics again. I always do this compressor map. First of all, bottom left corner 1.0 is one bar atmospheric pressure at the coast, not at the reef, at the coast sea level on both of these. And 1.4 pressure ratio is 1.4 times atmospheric is 0.4 gauge pressure bar, 0.8, 1.2, 1.6, 2 bar, 2.4, 2.8, 3.2, 4.6, etc. etc. cetera, et cetera. Right, first of all, maximum efficiency is 75% and it starts off at around about 0.6 bar boost where you'll actually come into the maximum efficiency island or start on the pressure ratio axis and you will end at approximately 2.1 bar, just over 2 bar. At that point, you should be flowing about 43, 44, about 450, 440 horsepower uh, at that specific point at uh, 2 bar, 2.1 bar. Uh, it's a nice wide map. Uh, it doesn't have a very aggressive surge limit. It stays you know, quite far to the left-hand side of the, 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 the flow graph and uh, you will start seeing maximum flow at about 65 pounds per minute of airflow and you will see that power being generated from around about two bar boost all the way up to 3.2 bar where you start to pull away and at that point you're sitting at around about 630 625 630 horsepower and uh, if you want to boost more than that which uh, you know 3.2 bar gauge pressure i don't think you ever need to you know, that is a nice wide range over there. You're still sitting in the 70%, just past the 70% efficiency island. On the S300 SXE, once again on the, on the, on the right-hand side, you have your maximum efficiency island of 77%, which starts off at approximately 0.7 of a bar, 0.65, 0.7 of a bar, and it ends off at 1.2 bar. And at 1.2 bar, you'll be generating just short of 430, 435 horsepower. But if you go down one percentage to the 76% efficiency island, it starts off at around about half a bar boost, and it ends off at about 1.8 bar boost at approximately 550 horsepower. Now, this is also a very wide map. I mean, it starts to make power. Let's say you're boosting two bar gauge pressure, which is approximately there you are going to intersect the 300 horsepower mark, 30 pound per minute of airflow, and you'll go all the way across to 825 horsepower, which is where you'll start to see the maximum horsepower, maximum flow of this compressor, provided your engine can use that flow at approximately two bar boost. And you will see that power being generated uh, all the way up to and including 3.2 bar boost pressure, still making 800 horsepower, 80 pounds, and let's say you go up to 3.4 bar, 
it starts to fall away from there. At 3.4 bar, you'll be sitting on 750 horsepower capable. So not many people boost 3.4 bar boost. If you want to max out a three bar, you're still going to be seeing a maximum flow rate from this turbocharger. So it starts at two, goes above three bar. You've got a nice usable wide range. Let's say you only want to boost up to a maximum of 1.8 bar. That'll be approximately that area there. You will still see an 800 horsepower, 780, 800 horsepower mark uh, power being de uh, uh, delivered. And it will come down to approximately... 250, 260, 270 horsepower around about that point there, nice and wide. And at 1.8 bar boost, you're actually intersecting the 76% efficiency island right across making all of that power. So these two turbochargers, let's compare specific points on these two just to see how they compare. Yes, they're different sizes, I know that. Yes, they're different flow rates, I know that. They're massively different in terms of the physical dimensions. But let's just go and take a one bar boost set up on the... It's 200 SXE. One bar is there. You start off at approximately 130 horsepower, 140 horsepower, and you go through the maximum efficiency island all the way across to a maximum of 550 capable horsepower. You'll max that out at about 550 horse at one bar, provided the engine can use the flow of the specific turbocharger at quite a low rotational speed. This specific compressor map is in meters a second, so you can calculate what the actual RPM is from that. One point at one bar, sorry, on the S300 SXE, which starts off at around about there, you're making about 175 horsepower. You run right through the maximum efficiency island of 77%, all the way across to approximately 740 horsepower. So 550 to 740 horsepower in these two different variants at the same boost at one bar, not bad. You cross the maximum efficiency islands of both these turbochargers. And, you know, most people, let's say you're running a 2-liter or a 2.2-liter stroked engine, multi-valve, head work, nice high revving. Both these turbochargers will be great contenders because a 2-liter engine in general will consume between 25 and 32 pounds per minute of airflow at approximately 6,000 RPM, generally speaking, um, at around about one bar boost. So you'll be operating in this sort of area here. Let's just round it off to 30 pounds at that point over there. You smack bang in the maximum efficiency island at one bar. The same thing will occur one bar at approximately 30 pounds. You are sitting at 74% efficiency. So you're not quite in the maximum efficiency island at that RPM, but increase your RPM, you'll start finding that your horsepower will increase and increase more and more as you increase that uh, engine RPM at the same boost pressure. Whereas on the S200 SXE, by the time you get to, and this is just a general rule, guys, I, had, I haven't calculated the volumetric efficiency and all the other parts that we need in the formula to, to verify this, but you can expect a dyno graph which looks like this. Okay, from, let's say, approximately, that's 2,000 RPM to, let's say, 7,500. That's more or less the shape that you'd find as opposed to this shape over here. Let's say that's 7,500 and 2K over here. So a little bit laggier on the S300, but you will still see that it's great for mid-range area as well as top end. You will carry on making more and more power as you rev the engine at the same boost pressure on the 300 SXE as opposed to the 200. 200 will peak a little bit early in the RPM and fall away. All right, guys, so what I want to do next is just bring the two 7670s that I have on the table here into view. These are identical turbochargers, except one runs a smaller turbine housing and the other runs the larger turbine housing. So we've got an AR83 T3 inlet V-band out on my right, and we've got a T4 AR92 turbine housing on the left. As you can see, twin scroll, T4 in and V-band out. These are identical turbochargers. Both of them are 650 horsepower capable. Both of them come complete with actuators, boost control solenoids, diverter valves, speed sensor ports, boost only source, etc., etc. You've got the internally gated 36 millimeter swing valves on both of these guys. Both of them come with iron bearing housings. 
and uh, they are one piece together with their back plates which mount onto the compressor housings with V-band clamps and four bolts with your clamping plates on that hold the turbine housings onto the bearing housing on the opposite side. These turbochargers are internally gated as mentioned. The intake tracks are fully machined on both of them. Both feature fully forged milled compressor wheels, BSR balanced, dual ball bearing, and these guys will make the power that they are claimed to make, 650 horsepower. You should see that kind of power at the wheels on most applications. Um, and that's the, re the reason for that is because Borg actually underrate or, or correctly rate the flow of these compressors. Uh, we've seen this in practice and from experience. We've noticed that the Borg Warner turbochargers, the power claimed on their catalogs is actually what you see or very close to at the wheels. Now, yes, every dyno is different. Yes, every dyno has got a different sea level correction factor, et cetera, et cetera. But you can expect to see those kind of flow rates being produced at the wheels. I'm going to move the 7670 out of the way. I want to compare 7670 to the 8474 compressor map. And then I'm going to compare the S300 SXE to the EFR 8474 Black Series. So let's do that now. On your screens now, you will see on my left hand side is the 7670 compressor map. On the right is the 8474. Back to basics once again. On the left hand side, the 1.0 over there, bottom left on the P2C or pressure ratio uh, axis, you find one bar atmospheric outside pressure at the coast at sea level on both of these compressor maps. Uh, let's go over the basics, right? So over there, two, two times atmospheric, which is one bar gauge pressure. That is two bar gauge pressure, three bar gauge pressure, etc. This Pacific Turbo 7670 will still make power from around about 375 horsepower, 380 horsepower, up to around 570 horsepower at 3.6 bar boost. You're still inside the compressor map, just, but you're still there at about 140,000 RPM. That is a very tall and a very wide compressor map. Let's go over the basics. 75% is the maximum efficiency island. You start to enter that efficiency island at about 0.9 bar, 0.85, 0.9 bar boost at approximately 260 horsepower. And you come to its end at approximately two bar boost, just a touch above two bar at approximately 425 horsepower. On your Horsepower ratings, where you'll start to see the maximum horsepower being generated is approximately from around about two bar boost. Um, and it will basically touch the 65 pound per minute of airflow and go up to around about uh, 2.4 to uh, 2.6 bar boost pressure on the gauge. And uh, it starts to fall away from there. Let's go a little bit back. Let's go to the 600 horsepower, the 610 horsepower mark, 620 horsepower mark. You'll start seeing that from around about 1.8 bar boost and you will see that consistent up to around about 2.8 2.9 bar boost and then from 2.9 if you go up to 3 bar you'll actually see you lose about 10 maybe 15 horsepower and then it starts to fall away uh, not many people are going to start boosting 3.2 bar so if you want to max this turbo out i would suggest you go to approximately 2.8 bar you will still see the 600 plus horsepower figures Let's do a, another review quickly on the 8474 Black Series. Maximum efficiency is 75%. You'll touch that island at about 0 0.8, 0 0.85 of a bar at 400 horsepower. You'll come to its end at approximately 1.8 bar at approximately 625 horsepower. Nice high usable range on the P2C side axis. Um, and then you'll have the ability to start seeing your 950 horsepower from around about 1.8 bar boost and you'll hold that all the way up to 2.8 bar boost where you start to fall away. At three bar, you're still making 925 horsepower. At 3.2 bar boost, you're still making 900 horsepower. So this compressor map doesn't fall away that much as you start pulling away up on the, uh, the, the pressure ratio. As you increase boost pressure, the power doesn't start falling away much. To max this turbocharger out, I would say three, to about 2.8 bar boost, you're still making your nine touch be before 950 horsepower. And uh, it's got a nice usable area in this area here. So let's take a point, compare these two. Let's say 1.4 bar boost pressure. That's approximately there 
On the 8474, you should start seeing that at approximately 28 pounds per minute of airflow, 280 horsepower. On a two liter engine, you'll start to come into uh, that area there at approximately five and a half thousand RPM, 5,000 RPM, and you will start to run across here um, up to a roundabout, that's 1.4 bar, around about 850 horsepower is where you'd see a maximum being generated. So nice turbocharger for a two liter or a 2.2 stroked four cylinder. And uh, it'll be nice and responsive, low down. Uh, you should start seeing compressor plots uh, at 1.4 bar, around about this area here to approximately there, to approximately there, and then obviously across. If you rev this to about eight and a half, nine thousand 9,000 RPM, you'd probably get to around about the 800 horsepower mark, um, or the 80, 80 pound per minute of airflow, con considering or providing your engine can use that kind of airflow um, at, that, at that pressure, or it's capable of making or using that kind of airflow at that pressure. But you should see this inside of the surge limit on those size engines, from 3,000, 3,500, 4,000 RPM upwards. Uh, I don't believe you'll have any problems with surge uh, any, anywhere below that. On the 7670, same size engine, 1.4 bar boost, which is approximately there, you will come into its own at around about 180 horsepower, and it will end off at approximately 550, 570, maybe even 580 horsepower. Um, Nice and wide, you cross over the maximum efficiency island. Same thing on the 8474, you cross, you cross through the maximum efficiency island at 1.4 bar. And the slightly smaller turbocharger, you will start seeing a little bit better boost response on a two liter size engine from being plotted three, three and a half thousand RPM around about this area here. So you'd start seeing things somewhere like that. And then obviously the higher you rev, maintaining 1.4 bar boost, you'll get up to your 550, 580 horsepower. No problem, depending on whether or not the engine can use that flow. All right guys, so what we've got here is a comparison between your S300 SXE on my left and the 8474 Black Series on the right hand side. So let's compare the rotating assembly size. S300 SXE has got a 64.4 inducer on the compressor and 87. The 8474 has got a 68 and 84. So slightly bigger on the inducer, three and a half mils, and three and a half mils or 3.4 mils smaller on the exducer. So the two turbochargers are quite evenly matched, although the 8474 is a 950 horsepower capable setup, and the S300 SXE, the specific unit, is an 825 horsepower capable unit. So Let's compare these together. Once again, bottom left, one bar atmospheric pressure at the coast, at sea level on both of these. Maximum boost, maximum usable boost pressure on the S300 SXE would be about 3.2 bar, 3.4 bar boost, which basically takes you to a nice usable range from approximately 500 horsepower up to your 750, 770 horsepower. And on the 8474 maximum boost, which I wouldn't exceed, that is nice, a widespread, a usable spread from this area there up until there is 3.2 bar boost. And it will start off at around about 530 horsepower and take you through to a 900 horsepower setup. So at 3.2 bar boost on the 8474, you still should see a 900 horsepower output. So nice and wide usable range. Uh, maximum efficiency on the S300 SXE is 77%. On the 8474, it is 75%. I'm not going to compare the maximum efficiency on this on the S300 SXE because it's so small. Let's just use the 76% efficiency island because it's more or less the same size as the 75% efficiency island on the 8474 Black Series in terms of the area that it covers from its bottom to the top on the P2C ratio axis. And uh, let's have a look and see what sort of characteristics you can expect from these two turbochargers next to each other. You come into the 8474 black at approximately 0.8 bar just above at 400, 420 horsepower. And you'll end off at around about 600, just past 620 horsepower at 1.8 bar boost. S300 SXE, you'll come up to the beginning of the 76% uh, efficiency island at about 0.5 bar boost, which is a little bit less than what you'll get on the 
on the EFR uh, 8474 black, and you will end off at approximately 550 horsepower at 1.6, 1.7 bar boosts, 1.8 bar boosts, around about there. Where will you see maximum power being generated, provided the engine can use the airflow on the S300 SXE, is approximately around two bar gauge pressure. And you should see 800, 820 horsepower at that point. 84, 74, you'll come into the maximum over there at around about 1.8 to two bar boost. And there you'll be making 950 horsepower. These two turbochargers are really, really closely matched. Uh, let's just plot a few points across the surge line. That's the surge line on the S300 SXE over there. That's the surge line on your EFR 8474 Black Series over there. So let's have a look and see at what flow rates you will start coming across the surge limit at what P2C ratios. Let's plot four, four points. So somewhere, let's be realistic about what boost pressure we can use. 3.2 bar boost, you're sitting at approximately 52 pounds per minute of airflow. 3.2 bar boost on the S300 SXE, you're sitting at approximately 47.5 pounds per minute of airflow. Very, very closely matched. You'll get a slightly better uh, result from the S300 SXE, even though it's journal bearing, believe it or not. Let's go down to 2.4 bar boost. You are going to intersect the surge limit on the 8474 at approximately 425 horsepower, 42.5 uh, uh, pounds per minute of airflow. That was at... 2.4, 2.4 bar on the S300 SXE, 350 horsepower or 35 pounds per minute of airflow. Let's go down to 1.6 bar on the S300 SXE is 250 horsepower, 25 pounds. On the 8474, you're looking at 320 horsepower or 32 pounds per minute of airflow. And lastly, let's go to 0.8 of a bar. Uh, on the S300 SXE, you're coming down to 15 pounds per minute of airflow. And on the 8474, you're coming down to 20 pounds, 200 horsepower. So really evenly matched. Um, what I like about the S300 SXE is the low boost horsepower capability. Let's have a look at one point, well, actually point 0.8 bar. Point 0.8 bar will take you all the way up to approximately 700 horsepower. On the 8474, you'll barely hit seven. Yeah, you'll hit about 650. So, you know, it's 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 a little bit more horsepower low down than what the EFR will give you. Um, but let's go one bar. One bar, we're looking at around about 750, 740 horsepower around about that area there. And on the EFR, you're looking at 750 horsepower. So, or seven, just about 730. So they they really really closely matched. If you're looking for bang for the buck, journal bearing, S300 SXE without a doubt. Um, and if you're looking for a ball bearing setup, 8474 uh, Black Series. These two are really, really closely matched. Okay, these two turbochargers next to each other, S300 SXE, 8474 Black Series. Look at the physical dimensions. They're not that much, they're not that different. The S300 SXE is slightly bigger in terms of its physical dimensions but it's not that much bigger. Obviously, you've got slightly uh, uh, a better range of uh, accessories with the 8474 being your diverter valve and obviously your boost control solenoid, and the S300 SXE doesn't have that. Uh, journal bearing, ball bearing, similarly sized, same size inlet, same size outlet. Uh, T4 inlet flange, open scroll with a V-band out, T4 twin scroll inlet, with a V-band out. Both of these are free floating. Uh, Height-wise, they're the same. And uh, housing and rotating assembly uh, on, on the turbine side, we are looking at really, really similar sizes as well. That'll give you a better idea in terms of the physical dimensions, outside dimensions of the two compressor housings. Not much in it, probably 20 millimeters or 15 millimeters if that. Turbine blade design. Completely different, you've got scallops over here on your S300 SXE, you've got a solid disc back. That is a titanium aluminide blade. This is a normal Inconel style blade, obviously a little bit heavier, slightly bigger, but these two turbochargers is obviously ball, be uh, ball bearing and water-cooled aluminum bearing housing. This is the iron bearing housing with 
oil cooling only. So these are quite closely matched, uh, beautiful housing, beautiful castings on these two housings, uh, especially the stainless steel with the EFR 8474 with the nice little radius outlet profile over there. Once again, physical dimensions, they are really, really close to one another. So in terms of geography, fitting it into uh, a BM, let's say it's an E36 shape BM using a 1J, 2J, RB25, 26, whatever, these will fit nicely. If you're using a four cylinder in any of the applications, whether it be an Evo or a Subaru or whatever the case might be, you will still, obviously Subaru will be a rotate mount and it'll be a bit of a tight fit or tighter fit, but uh, it's been done before. Um, and obviously on your Evos, you know, these, these kind of turbochargers do fit into those tight spaces with a little bit of uh, movement of all the other little parts that are sitting underneath the engine bay. Um, I'm really excited about these two turbochargers. In actual fact, I'm going to be doing an installation of both the 8474 Black as well as the S300 SXE. These two specific turbochargers onto the 1J engine that's going into our project car, which is an E36 BM. And uh, we'll be installing both of these turbochargers, playing around with different AR uh, turbine housings, just to show you guys what you can expect in terms of boost response, outright power at various boost levels. So we'll probably go half a bar. 0.81, 1.4, 2 bar, 2.2, 2.8, maybe 3.2 bar on both these turbos. Overlay, dynographs, just to give you guys a little bit more insight into what you can expect from these two turbochargers once installed on an actual application. All right, guys, so that's a little bit more about the Borgwarner range, a little bit more how I read compressor maps, do comparisons. It's interesting to see how the different turbochargers flow with the different size compressor wheels and turbine combinations. Uh, ball bearing to journal bearing, obviously different AR turbine and compressor housing combinations from the journal to, to ball bearing setups. Um, I hope it's been informative. I hope it sheds a little bit more light on the ball bearing and journal bearing offering from, uh, from Borg Warner. Um, their products are really, really great. They are far superior to any of the other brands out there. They are an OEM manufacturer, full support, full backup. Um, the pricing on these turbochargers in comparison to everything out there, based on all of the features that they feature and all the other accessories that they include, is really, really something that is, you know, bang for your buck. Um, can't shy away from that. So anyway, that's the gist on the Borg range. Hope that's been informative. Post some comments, questions, interact with us down below. Like, subscribe, catch you guys next time.